What's up, y'all? It's Joe Master Lee. And Lulu. Geography now time. Yay. This time it's yeah. the Netherlands. I get these countries mixed up all the time. And I don't have a very strong sort of distinction and understanding of the differences in the cultures and the languages. There's like always a couple things that you know about each country, mm -hmm. like, you know, how there's a lot of oil Norway. There's in Norway and Sweden has a lot of amazing music artists that come from there. But Netherlands was one where I always feel like I need to know more about. Like I understand some of it. We follow a couple of music artists from there who are clearly very, very talented, but I can use a little bit of a lesson. So this is why we're here. That's right. All right, so this is a gateway, y'all, all right? So after this, if there are other great videos about the Netherlands, in particular local vloggers and people who live there, we would love to learn about like life mm -hmm. there. That's kind of how we are enjoying ourselves during this pandemic. All right, let's check this out. And away we go. Hey guys, so this is gonna be a little awkward. Why? Because two years ago, my Dutch friend Vincent, who used to do the animations before I regrettably hired Ken, wait, what? He came and visited here in LA. Long story short, I promised him he could be Whoa! in the Netherlands episode. So we pre-shot some footage and this was the intro we made. He died. I flew over this guy, a real Dutchman. Say hi to Vincent right I mean, here. When you fall down skateboard like that and you hit your head in concrete, I think a lot of people die. You have to do the test, yeah. Hey Vincent, hey, look. Vincent, I know the Dutch are tall, but just step down from the box, okay? Oh. Just step down. Well, you get off of your box then. <laughs> I can never top those days. I was so Whoa. comedy gold. <laughs> this is why this guy is fun. He yes. just he's just fun in general. Hey everybody, I'm your host, Barbs. Now, there are many countries that deal with water issues. Some lack water, some have too much water, and some, like the Netherlands, have bridled the wild stallion and have learned how to control the water and use it to their advantage. Water is probably the most powerful element in the Netherlands, and without it, they would be, I don't know, pretty useless. So what do you say, 2016 <laughs> Vincent? And then, politieke geografie. So yeah, stop calling this place Holland. That's just one part of the country. Even though their country's national tourism website is called Holland.com. Mm -hmm. You're not helping us here, Dutchies. Because that's kind of what the we meat. are taught here in the US. Oh, and hey, there's a town called The Hulk. First of all, the country is located in northwestern Europe along the North Sea, bordered by Germany and Belgium. The country is divided into 12 provinces. Here's 2016 Vincent naming all of them for you. They are Limburg, North Holland, Zeiland, South Holland, Utrecht, Gelderland, Overijssel, Drenthe, Groningen, Friesland, North Holland, and the newest province, Flevoland. Almost all of Flevoland was- It sounds like whatever he's saying, they played it backwards. <laughs> reclaimed from the Zuiderzee in the 1950s. So besides being famous for making cheese and clogs, we also make our own land. The country kind of has two capitals, Amsterdam, the largest city and economic hub of the country, and home to the royal he palace. Said it that way because it's big land. I don't know. And just to skip over, the third largest city, The Hague, acts as the second capital, which holds the seat of government, as well as the International Court of Justice. Oh, I love the architectures. Yeah. Love it. Amsterdam is like the one place I've always wanted to visit out there. Mm. I've been to some of the other European countries, but the city of Amsterdam has always been interesting. Apart from the mainland European part, the country actually holds sovereignty over six other island entities in the Caribbean, remnants of the colonial past. These are collectively called the Dutch Caribbean. And here's where it gets a little confusing. Technically, the Netherlands is a country made up of four countries, the mainland Netherlands, as well as three other constituent countries, kind of like what Wales and Scotland are to the UK. They are Aruba, Curaçao, and St. Martin, which is actually half of an island shared with the French overseas territory of the same name, but in French. This means that this one island is the only oh, area which the Netherlands technically borders France. These guys hold a high level of autonomy. They can have their own constitutions and currency. Otherwise, the remaining three islands are Bonaire, St. Eustatius, and Little Saba, which by the way, has the shortest airport runway in the world. These three fall under the title of special oh. municipalities and do not belong to any province. They are directly controlled by the Dutch government. However, in 2011, they decided to switch currencies and adopt the US dollar. All these islands lie in the subregion known as the Lesser Antilles. Aruba, Curaçao, and Bonaire are usually referred to as the ABC islands, lying in the subregion of the Leeward Antilles, whereas St. Eustatius, Saba, and St. Martin. That's easy for the exam. <laughs> ABC. Usually called the SSS Islands, are located in the subregion of the Leeward Islands. Keep in mind, at one point, all six of these islands were called the Netherlands Antilles and operated collectively as a single constituent country with the capital at Willemstad in Curaçao. They even competed separately in the Olympics. With the exception of Aruba, who had autonomy in 1986, it wasn't until the early 2000s when they all voted for their future, and it kind of went like this. Okay, guys, you have four options for your future. Choose wisely. You can have closer ties to us, remain just as you are in the Netherlands Antilles, autonomy as a constituent country within 
the Kingdom of the Netherlands, or you can opt for complete independence as a new nation and break away from us. We vote for autonomy as constituent countries. Me too. What the? We want closure ties and we'll settle for special municipality status. Really, Bonaire? You're one of us, the ABC Island. You're really gonna ditch us like that and leave us with this half Frenchy magoo? Yep, deal with it. And that's basically how it went down. So there you go, that's how you make a Netherlands. Waterways dominate the country though. There's even a town with no roads and only canals. But how Whoa. did it end up this way? Somewhere around the 9th century, people were kind of fed up with all the flooding and they invented these seawalls known as dikes, which surrounded polders or reclaimed land plots protected by the dikes. To to this day, the Netherlands has reclaimed about a fifth of its total landmass from the sea. So, what would happen if all the dikes were destroyed and all the water just came and flooded everything? Scientists speculate that the country would go from looking like this to this. Whoa, Amsterdam would be gone. Yep. Luckily, the Dutch are fantastic engineers and have been taming this dragon for centuries. And speaking of engineering... Well, we could use some of that help out here. So many museums, but the most notable one probably being the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam, the Royal Palace, the Van Gogh wow. Museum, the Anne Frank House, numerous castles like these, numerous star-shaped fortress towns, so many amusement parks like these, the enclaves and there. exclaves of Beryl Nassau, we talked about this in the Belgium episode, the world's largest flower garden at Kuchenhof, Austerlitz Pyramid, this prehistoric burial site, and of course there are somewhere around 1,000 historic <laughs> windmills left in the country from the 1800s, mostly in the Kinderdijk area, a UNESCO heritage site. Keep in mind though, the country has a ton of modern wind turbines that help supply energy to the nation, a topic that will be discussed in... Greek philosopher Pythias visited in the 3rd century BC and he said about this place, more people have died in the struggle against water than in the struggle against men. The Netherlands is really unlike any other country in Europe because in order for them to even have physical land, a lot of work has to go into it. For one, the country is the lowest country in Europe, elevation wise. Over a quarter of the land and a fifth of the population lies below sea level and about half of the land lies less than a meter above sea level. That's like totally opposite of Norway, which is, has these huge rocky crags. Mm. The lowest point actually being here at Soitplas Polder, and the highest point of the mainland European part of the country at a small hill called Falseberg, just over a thousand feet or 322 meters high. However, in the entire kingdom of the Netherlands, the highest point would actually be Mount Scenery, a potentially active volcano on the island of Saba in the Caribbean. Back to mainland Europe though, within this complex system of waterways and canals, the famous Rhine River that goes through all of Europe and the longest in the country actually ends in Rotterdam. The largest body of water would be Lake or Bay Yelsemir, contained within the N302 and E22 highways. In order to manage all the flooding in the south though, the Netherlands has undergone one of the largest engineering projects in modern history. The Delta Works is a series of massive elevated levees that close off sea estuaries, preventing flooding. They even have backup levees in case one down the line bursts. In the north though, the Walden Islands act as kind of like natural barriers against the sea. All this land reclamation has left many of the inland areas exposed to what are labeled as the largest open sand drifts in Europe. Keep in mind, they are not deserts, but rather strange wet sandy plots in the middle of green shrubbery, a rare natural sight to come across anywhere in the world. So in a nutshell, oh. the entire country is basically this one is big totally river delta. Geography hmm. We should hang out sometime. Whew. So that's just about it for now. I gotta get my triple shot of espresso break, which means we need a guy who knows a few things. <laughs> <laughs> Besides all the water chaos, the Netherlands <laughs> is quite a powerful nation considering its size. This dude is a straight up WWE wrestler. They rank in the top 20 largest world economies, usually around 17th or 16th place, and they rank somewhere in the top five to 10 largest exporters on earth. In fact, they have the oldest stock exchange in the world dating back to 1602. Didn't that lead to like the whole tulip mania thing where people sold a single bulb for the price of like an entire ship? That was not the stock market. That was just a socioeconomic phenomenon and at its height sold for 10 times the annual wage of a skilled craftsman. Anyway, today, although they produce about 80% of the world's tulips, Mania? Mm -mm. One of the craziest stories about economics ever. Yeah, really? Half of the world's cut flower exports, their economy is mostly driven by the service and energy sectors. After the discovery of a natural gas field in 1959, the Dutch became a fuel powerhouse. The Shell Company became the largest and most internationally recognized Dutch company in the world. Besides the petroleum industry though, the Dutch are well known for their electronics and tech innovation. The company Philips invented really? the audio tape, which helped pioneer oh. other formats like videotapes, right. CDs, DVDs, and Blu-rays. Yeah, the company was Dutch, but keep in mind it was invented in Hasselt, Belgium. Oh, Belgium. We love you, but 
don't try to f***ing take this from us. Otherwise, the Dutch have made great strides towards environmental protection. It's not uncommon to find Animal Crossing bridges to allow wildlife to cross over highways. Over 70 Aww. mammal species exist here, such as hares, hedgehogs, stoats, and deer. That's a brilliant idea. How would they know that there's a bridge for them? Mm, GPS. Oh. <laughs> In addition, according to their government website, they produce over 65 billion euros in vegetable, fruit, flour, meat, and dairy products. Speaking of which, the modern orange-colored carrot was originally bred orange here in the Netherlands to specifically honor the king. Since then, orange carrots are now kind of an international staple. And speaking of which, food! Some top notable dishes you guys, the Dutch geography peeps, suggested we mentioned include things like various types of stamp pots, Dutch pancakes with powdered sugar, apple tarts, bitter ballen, wet pea soup, mm, rookworts, mm, stroop waffles, mm, so mm, many potato dishes. Yeah. Yeah. Gin was invented here. <laughs> Sorry, Brits. For breakfast, chocolate sprinkles on toast is common. What? And the pride and joy of the nation, how to that? that? Yep, that's how you pronounce it, guys. Oh, and keep in mind, they used to be the largest beer exporters in the world, Heineken being their top brand until Mexico beat them in 2010. Oh, wow. Cool. It's also oh important to note that you will probably find lots of Indonesian and Surinamese dishes like satay or salted cod buns. A little cultural cue that hints towards the colonial past. Which brings us to... Thank uh, you, Noel. Follow him on Instagram. Right, that's interesting. Okay, yep. okay, that just happened. Now, in Europe, you have all different types of people that operate with all different customs and ideologies. Here, they have two sayings that kind of sum up how a lot of their country operates. Meten is weten and geselligheid kent geen tide. How is that, Dutchies? Terrible? Good? <laughs> well, you're gonna get what I give. Anyway, the country has about 17.5 million people and is mean. the most densely populated nation in Europe. About 77% of the population identifies as Dutch, to whatever extent that may mean, whereas 10% are other Europeans, and the remainder are made up of other people groups, mostly Turks, Indonesians, as well as the Surinamese, and surprisingly, even some Americans. They use the Euro as their currency, mm. they use the Type C and F plug outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road. Now, we all know that Dutch is the official language of the Netherlands, however, if you speak English, you should have no problem at all visiting. Netherlands has the highest proficiency in English out of any non-English official country in the world. Somewhere around 9 out of 10 Dutch people claim they can comfortably speak English, and around 94% of the country is in some way bilingual. It seems bilingual. like it would make a lot more sense to go visit there first than, yeah, than other countries. Norway. Yeah. Well, Geography Anna told me a joke. Many times Dutch kids will ask their parents, Hey mom. Yes, honey. Why do we have to learn English, but the British don't have to learn Dutch? Because our ancestors decided it would be a great idea to trade New York for Suriname and one small island in Indonesia. It's important to note, though, that there are two other regional languages accepted in Dutch society. They are Frisian, spoken in the northern Friesland region, and the other being Papimiento, a Dutch Creole spoken in the ABC Islands. But it's already kind of well known that the Dutch are the tallest people on average in the world, men averaging around six foot one and women around five foot seven. Whoa. We would look like yeah. freaks of nature being short. Yeah. 2016 Vincent explaining. Latest studies have shown that natural selection has been the biggest reason. Being tall is equal to being more athletic, successful, and healthy. Many educated men start families after their studies. Fast forward a couple of years with length being very heritable and the result is a nation of giants. Yeah, we're outbreeding short people. Mm. Religion in the Netherlands is interesting because historically they used to be predominantly Christian, mostly Protestant, but today about half the population identifies as unaffiliated, which depending on who you ask could be anything from the largest unaffiliated group, agnostics, at about 34%, to the growing number of eat at around 28%, which is kind of like a technical term for spiritual but not religious. Otherwise, Islam at about 5% of the population is mostly practiced by Turkish and Indonesian communities. Christianity, although not practiced regularly by most of the people, still plays a heavy cultural role in the Netherlands. Holidays like Christmas, Easter, Pentecost, and Ascension are still celebrated by everyone in a Dutch manner. At one point, there were a vast empire that spanned across every inhabited continent. Australia was at one point called New Holland, New Zealand, named after the Zeeland province, Tasmania, named after this Dutch guy, New York was once called New Amsterdam, and so wow. on. Otherwise, what is the they Dutch way of doing things? Colonizing. Many of you guys, the Dutch geography people, have told me there's a Dutch saying, act normal, which is ironic considering that they are almost anything but normal. And here's random Hannah to explain culture stuff. Historically, the Dutch have always kind of had a counter traditional mindset that shaped the way they developed as a nation. For one, they are one of the few remaining monarchies left in the world, technically a unitary parliamentary constitutional monarchy that limits the royal powers. And the people generally like their king. He even has a holiday to himself, and the entire country wears the national color of orange. Of course, the country is known for being a front runner in passing what many in the world see as controversial laws. They were the first country to legalize same-sex marriage, they have regulated 
committed legal prostitution, euthanasia, and they have a policy of tolerance towards yes. recreational soft drugs like marijuana. Legal. Legal. That's why people go to Amsterdam. They literally have the red light district where you can just go and get a lot. Mm -mm, mm -mm. really? Oh, yeah. Although they've been hit very, very hard because of the coronavirus. Coronavirus. Yeah. They are world renowned for excelling in field hockey, speed skating, and volleyball teams. Sailing is of course one of their longest pastimes. They even have a huge festival once every five years called the Sailed Amsterdam Whoa. Festival. For some oh reason, God. it's common that for people to like give birth in their own homes mess. as opposed to a hospital. About one third of all babies are born this way. Uh, what about those clog things? Ah, yes. Well, in the past, they actually served a very useful purpose. They were worn by farmers, fishermen, and artisans in the past to protect their feet from nails, fish hooks, and other other sharp objects. Today they are mostly sold as souvenirs and very few people actually wear them, but they're pretty cool. Yeah, because they look so uncomfortable. <laughs> What's up with all those spinny windmill thingy mabobbers? Ah, uh, yes, the iconic symbol of the Netherlands. Well, Netherlands. many of these historic windmills were actually used to pump out excess water to reclaim the land that they now use for farming, all before electricity. And as for music, the- Actually, I got this one. Barb said I could have my own segment in the show now instead of just being a one-liner guy. Yeah, that's right, uh, Keith has been upgraded, so yeah. Well, well, enjoy it. Well, that just happened. Again, I guess everybody has superpowers now. Historically speaking, the Dutch contributed much to the Baroque period at the end of the Renaissance, with numerous composers, organ players, and vocalists rooted in Christianity. Traditional clog dancing was also a cool way to add percussion to folk music in rural areas. Today, however, even wood. though there are yes. many genres the Dutch enjoy, electronic music reigns supreme. Most of the best well-known DJs in the EDM scene across the world Yeah, are why is that? I've always wondered And why the Amsterdam world. Dance Event, ADE, is the world's top and largest electronic music conference. So if you come out here, get ready to get shocked with some musical electricity. I wish they went into detail why that's the case. Like Sweden is so well known for music artists, music. but when it comes to EDM, so many from the Netherlands. Thank you, Keith. And speaking of the development of the Netherlands over time, let's talk about history in the quickest way I can put it. Hamburg and Bronze Age cultures, Iron Age with Celt and Germanic groups, Gallic Wars, the Romans come in, Frankish kingdoms, Charlemagne, blah, blah, blah. Friesland once had a Viking ruler, Lotharingia, Holy Roman Empire, confusing Burgundian and Spanish Habsburg and city-states, the Spanish takeover, Dutch revolt, 80 years of war against Spain, this dude is a hero, Golden Age and stock market, Dutch East India Company, exploring years, Dutch empire, Napoleon drama, Belgium breaks away, Luxembourg breaks away, World War I, relatively neutral, World War II, attacked by Germans, not neutral, decolonialism after the war, mining golden age, founding co-members of the European coal and steel community, which would later become the EU, government encourages over half a million people to move out, Euro adopted, and here we are today. Oh, Some notable people you guys, the Dutch geography people suggest we mention, might include people like William of Orange, the first king, Michael de Reuter, possibly the most famous painters, Vincent van Gogh and Rembrandt, Anthony van Llewellenhoek, Willem Berendt, Abel Tass, Jasmine, Anne Frank, Max Verstappen, Glennis Grace, Dick Bruna, these soccer players, these skaters, and of course the royal family. That picture makes it look like the it's like episode of the Kardashians. Kardashian. <laughs> you thought so too, huh? And of course, there's so many others I could have mentioned. Of course, I butchered all the pronunciations, but we're really running out of time and we gotta finish this marathon. So without further ado, let's see who the Netherlands hangs out with. Now, there's a reason why it's called going Dutch when paying for a meal. The Netherlands likes to share. Systematic and mathematically equivalent to what is owed to each based on the merit they've earned. First of all, pretty much all the former colonies have some kind of amicable relation to the Netherlands. The Afrikaans language in South Africa is basically just an Africanized version of Dutch. Tons of Surinamese oh, really? and Indonesians have been migrating to the Netherlands for decades. Otherwise, the USA and Canada are very close friends as well. During World War II, the royal family actually took refuge in Canada, and Canada actually quickly changed the law in which the hospital was temporarily considered extra territorial so that the princess could be born Dutch. To this day, the Netherlands sends tons of flowers every year in gratitude. For the US, the two go way back all the way to New Amsterdam before it was New York. The Dutch have immigrated to the US for centuries. Five American presidents have been of Dutch descent. They are each other's third largest direct foreign investors. They are both charter members of NATO since 1949. And overall, in most global affairs, the two usually work together as close allies. With Germany, it's like a funny love-hate relationship. Like the two share so much historically, both being under the same influence 
influences like the Western Roman Empire, the Franks, and even their first king, William of Orange, belong to a German a royal house. Then again, World War II was kind of like a jerk move, and the Dutch never really forgot about it. But nonetheless, they've moved on, and today things are fine. Germany is their largest trading partner, both in imports and exports. Many Germans and Dutch cross over and visit, study, live, and have families with each other's countries. When it comes to their best friend, however, almost every single Dutch person I have talked to has said their little brother they love picking fun on and calling stupid Belgium. Or at least specifically the northern Flanders region of Belgium where the Dutch speakers are. And many see the Flanders region as just an extension of the Dutch Brothers. realm. The royal families love each Brothers. other. King Brothers. William Alexander Brothers. even bestowed the Knight Grand Cross to King Philip and his wife. Flemish and Dutch people have been intermarrying and cooperating side by side since the beginning. And even after Belgium's independence, they've still clung on as the only two Dutch official speaking nations in Europe. And even then, Belgium is only half Dutch speaking, so they really can't afford to sever ties. In conclusion, the lowest nation in Europe with the tallest people on earth and with centuries of discovery, invention, innovation, and tradition, it's no wonder why the Dutch say they keep their heads above water. Stay tuned, New Zealand <laughs> is coming up next. So once again, Vincent, thank you so much for being in this episode, our favorite Dutchman. Wow. A lot to digest. But yeah, the tulip mania thing was so fascinating. What was it all about? Well, the specifics uh, I won't get into, but basically it's like some sort of craze that developed where everyone must have a tulip type of thing. Like the flowers are so prized that the prices of them keep climbing and climbing and climbing. And it's like almost putting money into it, oh, like investing like, like invest Bitcoin tulips, yeah. or like Beanie Babies, right? Like suddenly like these toys that everyone wants and they would collect them. They think, oh, Oh my god it's gonna be worth so much money one day or like collecting right. comic books except that they're tulips and tulips eventually they die, they die. so i'm like it, it was crazy but yeah i mean it reached the point where literally you were just to buy like a flower and it's worth someone's what? whole salary for a year type of thing well unless if you're gonna make your garden so that will last or i guess that was the craze it was like Everyone had to have a tulip kind of thing. I don't know if there's a really good video out there about the tulip mania. Let us know. That might be a fun one to watch if you aren't familiar with it. Because I'm interested in going back to try to understand like what was the cause of it. Like, well, everybody loves tulips, but the only now thing, they're so common. Yeah, they're, they're everywhere. Very common, and they're not easy to take care. They'll die easily if you're. Oh, I don't know. I don't try to bother raise right. plants. I mean, for you, plastic plants die, so. Oh. <laughs> Babe, you know it's Baby, true. I thought it you is, know it's it true. Is, but one day, I really want to learn how to raise plants. Really, it's so popular nowadays. Like everybody, uh, clearly you don't have any and... Dutch blood in you because <laughs> I just don't have a green. Don't live. Yeah, green thumb. But all right, well, this was fun, y'all. This was fun. Until next time, a peace out.